thank you for letting me come down once again to talk about a, a very pressing, important issue in this country, one that I'm going to continue to use the bully pulpit to help educate my colleagues, uh, the public as a whole, even you, Mr. Speaker, on, the, on addressing the need to, to address high-level nuclear waste in this country. It, it's an issue that's been around since the, the development of the nuclear weapon system that we used to win World War II. Some of that waste is still there from that time, and it still sits in the same location we had it 40, 50 years ago. It's hit the international stage with uh, the experience that Japan has had in Fukushima Daiichi and the tsunami, um, not just the uh, generating facility themselves, but what happened to the nuclear waste on site. And a, a international uh, nuclear disaster that still is making it difficult for our, our allies in Japan and really causes us to, to make sure that we look at our systems to understand what is our national policy on high-level nuclear waste and why are we not moving forward. What I've done in my times coming to the floor is go around the country and highlight where nuclear waste sites are and compare it to where we, by federal law, have stated our nuclear waste should be stored. Uh, this is all under the 1982 Energy Policy Act, and a site was located under that law in 1987. So let's go uh, through the area and, and, and I'd, for a, a brief review. The first site that uh, I visited personally was in Washington State, um, and the site is called Hanford, which was a good place to start in this tour of, of where nuclear waste is, because the vast majority of nuclear waste stored here is Department of Defense and Department of Energy waste that was used to develop our nuclear weapon systems during World War II. There are 57 million gallons of nuclear waste on site, mostly in large tanks of 750,000 to a million gallons each. The waste is stored 10 feet underground. The waste is 250 feet above the water table. And the waste is one mile from the Columbia River and, um, which is not lo le listed there, some of that waste is leaking from the tanks. So let's compare it to the site that we have des decided by law to establish, which is Yucca Mountain. Yucca Mountain has currently no nuclear waste on site. The waste would be stored 1,000 feet underground. The waste is 1,000 feet above the water table. And the waste would be 100 miles from the Colorado River. A nuclear waste next to the Columbia River or nuclear waste stored underneath a mountain in a desert. Uh, that's site number one. Next, not to pick on other states and, and to the exclusion of mine, the next location I talked about was the Zion um, power plant decommissioned high level nuclear waste still on site. So let's compare it to Yucca Mountain. 65 casks containing 1,135 metric tons of nuclear waste. The waste is stored above the ground, five feet above the water table, and 1,300 feet from Lake Michigan. And of course, this is Lake Michigan right there. Part of the time, what I've been doing is highlighting a location and looking at the state surrounding. Uh, uh, the state of Wisconsin has two nuclear power plants, both on Lake Michigan similarly located. Of course, the stats for Yucca Mountain are the same. Let me add here that Yucca Mountain, uh, we've already spent $15 billion to study this site, uh, 20 years in the making, uh, and we still wait. I'm not sure if this is still in the proper order that I've come down to the floor, but the next uh, nuclear power plant that I wanted to highlight was uh, a San Onofre Nuclear Generating Station. Now, this one is in California, and it's right next to the Pacific Ocean. 
kind of on the opposite side from where Japan is. It's, uh, and you can see the waves and you can see how close it is to the Pacific Ocean. At this po power plant, there's 2,300 waste rods on site. The waste is stored above the ground and in pools adjacent to the Pacific Ocean, as I said, and 45 miles from San Diego. Now, Yucca is 90 miles to 100 miles from uh, Las Vegas. It's also in the, um, in the size, the government property is the size of the state of Rhode Island. It's controlled by uh, a couple entities, Department of Energy being one, the Bureau of Land Management being another, and the, and the third one, it is a nuclear test site where we tested nuclear weapons years ago. I didn't mention in Zion, Zion is about 45 miles from uh, Chicago, Illinois. Uh, another nuclear power plant that uh, is, is in uh, Massachusetts. And as you can see, it's next to uh, Cape Cod, the Pilgrim Generating Facility, 2,918 spent fuel assemblies on site. Waste is stored above the ground in pools. And why is that important? Part of the problem in Fukushima Daiichi was that there was waste stored in pools. Because of the disaster, we're not really sure what happened either. The uh, foundation was cracked and the water, coolant water, left the, the pond or the power went off, the, the water couldn't circulate, uh, the heat by the rods evaporated the water, then the heat on heat caused the, uh, the rods to in essence start to melt, which is a very dangerous situation. So many of our nuclear waste throughout this country is stored in pools around the country. Why is that important? It's because it's our national policy based upon the law passed in 1982, followed up by the location site in 87, that we'd have one geological repository. Not nuclear waste stored all over this country, but we'd have one centralized location. Now it's important to add that in the next couple days, the Blue Ribbon Commission is going to come out with a report, and we think it's going to say it's in the national interest to have one geological repository for high-level nuclear waste, and we await with interest that report. Now we go to Idaho National Labs, a, a federal uh, national laboratory in Idaho, uh, comparing it to where nuclear waste would be stored if we would continue to comply with federal law. And we have in Idaho, there is uh, 5,090 canisters of waste. And a, a, a good point to note on this waste, a lot of this waste, again, is from the research done on nuclear power and nuclear weapon systems. And in that process, you create waste. As in Hanford, as they're trying to decide what to do with the waste, uh, the containment system to transport the waste have all been designed with the plan to store in Yucca Mountain. So when you look at the 53 million gallons in Hanford and we're going to move that waste out of Washington State and to Yucca, time, effort, energy, and money has gone into preparing the technology to move this waste and store it in Yucca Mountain, similar to Idaho National Labs. At the, currently, though, it's, uh, we have 5,090 canisters on site. Waste is stored above the ground. Waste is 500 feet above the water table. And the waste is 50 miles from Yellowstone National Park. Then we go to the great uh, southeast in the, in the state of Georgia. And we look at the Savannah Generating Station, where you have 6,300 canisters of nuclear waste on site. Water is stored right below the ground, 0 to 160 feet above the water table. And as you can see from the photo, it's right next to the Savannah River. 
you know, part of the debate and the and that that the environmental left and anti-nuclear folks put is about water in the desert and how it's going to affect nuclear waste. And part of the educational process that I've learned going through the different sites, you really can't find a nuclear power site. Of course, and all nuclear waste generated is still on site. That's not close to a body of water. So that's this whole issue about would you rather have it next to a body of water or would you rather have it in a desert? Um, I think that debating point is, is pretty clear. So that's uh, Savannah Generating Station uh, versus Yucca Mountain. I think right before the end of last year, I came down on the floor and the, and the, and the location that uh, I was to talk about next, of course, I got off topic a little bit and didn't really clarify and identify as Turkey Point. Turkey Point is in the state of Florida. Um, and of course, it's, again, we're comparing it to Yucca Mountain. The waste is stored above the ground in pools. Waste is on Biscayne Bay at sea level and the waste is 10 miles from the Everglades. Versus Yucca Mountain, again, defined by the Nuclear Waste Policy Act in 1982. Um, uh, Yucca was uh, established by federal law by this chamber and the other chamber and the President of the United States in 1987. Yucca Mountain is in a desert. The storage site would be underneath a mountain in that desert, far away from um, any population um, that uh, would be immediately affected. Another uh, location that I was to address last week, which I also got off topic, um, is the Sequoia Nuclear Generating Station. The waste is stored above ground in pools and dry cast. Waste is 25 feet from the groundwater and waste is 14 miles from, the, from Chattanooga on Chickamauga Lake. Now what I've done once we get to new states that I haven't really identified, then I've gone and looked at um, the senators passed statements and their or their voting record on this because we had a vote on the floor this year on whether we should move forward uh, with the dollars to finish the final scientific study by the Nuclear Regulatory Commission and that vote was 297 yes now there's only 4, 435 members in this chamber a huge bipartisan vote that uh, really I sent the signal of where the will of this chamber is. So why can't we move forward? Uh, the issue is the majority leader of the Senate happens to be from the state of Nevada. And to really get the Senate to move, you have to hold the senators from these states accountable, or at least for them to state a position as to where they stand on where the nuclear waste currently is and, and really, what is the proposal and what should we do with it? Uh, so having done that before, I then look at the senators. Uh, Senator Alexander is a yes. Senator Corker is a no. Senator Byrd is a yes. A yes is let's move our nuclear waste to Yucca Mountain in a desert underneath a mountain. Uh, Senator Hagan is silent. What, is it, what I mean by silent? We couldn't find any public statements. Of course, the Senate has not cast a vote. Uh, so that's what we, we hope maybe the Senator will at some time make her position known. But as of now, we will list her as, as being silent. Again, why is that important? Because we really need to find out where the Senators are. Uh, under the Senate rules, to break a filibuster, you have to have 60 votes. So I'm hoping that through this process, we'll finally tally them up, which is what I'll do at the end of my time, and kind of show you where we are so far. Now, I still have a couple places around the country to address. Uh, remember that these are just one, many states like mine, I pointed out Zion, but we actually have six sites and 11 reactors. Illinois is a huge nuclear power plant. 50% of our electricity comes from nuclear power. And, and so, 
even though I'm mentioning a few, you can multiply that by three as far as how much nuclear power plants are out there and equivalent. If there is a nuclear power plant in your state, then your state is the storage site for nuclear waste right now. The state that I was, uh, came to the floor on to highlight today is, is, and the region is the state of Arkansas and the state of Missouri. Now Missouri, as I know, I'm from Illinois, I'm from Southern Illinois, I know the state of Missouri well. Uh, the state of Missouri has a nuclear power plant cause, called Callaway. So you could just, the same thing I'm mentioning here on this power plant in Arkansas, you can, you can make for the, uh, the Callaway plant. So uh, let's look at the one we've chosen, which is a power plant called Nuclear One. Nuclear One has waste stored above the ground in pools and dry casts. Uh, obviously, there's no nuclear waste at Yucca Mountain, but if there was, where would it be stored? It would be stored a thousand feet above, uh, underneath the ground. Nuclear One has waste adjacent to a water supply. Of course, you can see the photo right here. As I've highlighted in almost every nuclear power plant or waste site, there's water nearby. Well, of course, Yucca Mountain's in a desert. So, uh, the waste would be stored a thousand feet above the water table. Nuclear One is waste, and I can't pronounce it, on Lake Dardanelle, a reservoir on the Arkansas River. Now, what's a reservoir? I, I think by definition, a reservoir is a, 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 a body of water that you've created to hold water for public use whether that's for recreation or for drinking and, and stuff. So there you have, you've got Nuclear One right on this reservoir. Now what about the senators from the state of Arkansas? I mean, are they happy with uh, this nuclear waste on site? Um, and so let's look at their position. We actually have a few other states represented too. First from the state of Arkansas, we have Senator Bozeman, one of our former colleagues, uh, has, a, has a stated position and cast votes in support of Yucca Mountain. Senator Pryor, as far as we can tell, is silent. From Iowa, uh, Senator Grassley is a yes. Uh, Senator Hark is not only silent, he's a no. So Senator, not sure uh, what that would be, maybe because Iowa doesn't have nuclear power plants in the state of Iowa, but there's definitely some around there. And it must be his position that nuclear waste stored around this country is okay. Then you go to the state of Kansas. Um, another colleague, former colleague of ours, Senator Moran, has voted yes on Yucca Mountain. That's a good place to put high-level nuclear waste in a single repository. Um, Senator Roberts, also a yes vote from the state of Missouri. Another uh, co former colleague of ours, Senator Blunt is a yes on moving high-level nuclear waste from the state of Missouri to a desert underneath a mountain. Uh, Senator McCaskill is silent on this, which, uh, the, again, since I'm, I'm next door to the state of Missouri, I know that, that the Callaway nuclear power plant is in the state of Missouri, um, and Senator McCaskill is silent on that issue. So what's our scorecard? Where are we at with uh, going around the countries? Because remember, Mr. Speaker, because of the Senate rules, we have to get the 60 to really push something through. So we've identified what we believe is actually 36 yes votes so far. We've identified 11, actually 10. This should be updated. We have 10 that we really don't know their position. Uh, in, a, in other words, they have no public statement, or they have not cast a vote. And then we have eight definite no's, which means they have made public statements in opposition to moving nuclear waste underneath a mountain in a desert, or they, uh, they've cast a vote somewhere in some type or signed a letter. Uh, we're happy to be corrected on any of this analysis of where uh, senators are in this process. Why have we not moved forward on, on Yucca Mountain? And the answer is pretty clear. 
that uh, when this administration was running for the presidency, uh, he wanting to get support from the uh, senior senator from the state of Nevada promised not to move forward. That's fine. It was a political decision. Uh, he's holding to his commitment to do that at the cost of what? Nuclear waste being uh, held across this country in states around this country in places that after Fukushima Daiichi, you might argue, might not be the best place to have this nuclear waste. So he, the president and the majority leader of the Senate has placed this in the political realm. Uh, elections have consequences. We're approaching an election cycle. There'll be uh, senators on the ballot in November. Where are, what is their position on what their state and what should be the national position on what we do with high level nuclear waste. So we do know we've got a lot who have on record saying nuclear waste ought to go in a single repository in a desert underneath a mountain. We do believe that the Blue Ribbon Commission this week will say this country needs a single repository. We do have 10 senators that we do not know their position and to their credit, we have eight that we do know their position in opposition. But it looks, from being a casual observer, and if the trend continues, that we're getting close to a majority of U.S. senators that say that we should have a single repository, and that single repository should be what's been identified under the Nuclear Waste Policy Act and the following legislation in 1987 that said, Yucca Mountain is a site. Why is this important? Fukushima Daiichi is example number one, uh, the health and wellness of our citizens, the location of all this nuclear waste. And we have to continue to highlight these concerns because the nuclear waste isn't going away. In fact, we've got some nuclear power plants being constructed right now. Maybe in 10 or 15 years, they'll start generating. And when they do, they'll start creating nuclear waste. And that nuclear waste is going to have to go somewhere. Now, the question that we've highlighted throughout this year, we'll finish in a couple months. Should that be in all these states and all these locations, or should it be at a single repository? Mr. Speaker, I look forward to coming down numerous times in the future to continue to, to identify each state, each senator, and then allow the public the information so that they can make a decision if this is an important criteria in this next election cycle. I hope that the answer would be yes, so that we would follow up on a national policy to deal with high-level nuclear waste. We've only spent $15.5 billion in over 20 years to identify Yucca Mountain as a site. If we were to try to find a new site, we throw away the $15 billion, the 20 years of research, and we'll have to have another 20-year time of research and development and another $15 billion to get to the same location we are today. Mr. Speaker, I appreciate your time. And with that, I yield back the balance of my time.